Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and you're watching The Brown Feminist. So today I'm going to be answering an important question that many of you have been asking me in the comment section. And that is, how can you build a career in Canada in clinical research if you are a foreign worker? which means that you don't live in Canada right now, you're not a permanent resident or citizen of Canada, and maybe you're not physically in Canada either, and you just really love Canada as a country, and you think it's great, and you wanna build a home here, and the way that you wanna do that is through a career in clinical research. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now, there's a couple of ways that this can be done, and I'm going to be answering it, assuming that this person who asked me the question is not from a clinical or nursing kind of background because if you are, then the answer is a little bit different and for that, I will make a separate video. So let's assume that this individual has a bachelor's of science or a master's of science and wherever they are, they've been practicing as a clinical research associate or coordinator and they really want to understand the job market in Canada and move here eventually and get work here. So there's a couple of different challenges here that you can overcome. So the first thing is that Canada does not very readily hire foreign workers unless there is an acute shortage at home. So for example, if you had been a nurse, I would have told you that come here first as a nurse, practice for a few years in nursing um, because there is a huge shortage in that industry and they would very easily and much more readily hire foreign temporary nursing workers and that can be a pathway to becoming a permanent resident after which you can always change your field in the long run. Now, if you're not from a clinical background, then it is a lot more challenging. And the reason is that not every Canadian company that does clinical trials has the legal right to hire foreign workers. In order to do that, they usually need to apply for something called an LMIA, which just grants them temporary permission from the government to hire foreign workers when they can demonstrate that the skills that are needed for their project is not being able to full, be fulfilled by a shortage in the local job market. So if they post the job, they don't get the resumes, they don't get the skills they want or they need, and that happens a couple of times and it's been demonstrated very clearly, very evidently, then they can get that temporary permission. And very few industries can do that year after year after year, unless there is like a huge national shortage, right? They would have to show that they've tried the normal avenues of advertising and getting recruiters and this and that, and they were still not able to fulfill or meet the demand. So that is why if you are trying to apply for a clinical research position from a different country in Canada, assuming it's not the US, which is a little bit different for NAFTA, um, but assuming you're somewhere outside of North America and you're applying to jobs in Canada, a majority of the organizations, unfortunately, don't have the legal right to directly hire foreign workers. Unless, like I said, a few of them go ahead and get this special permission. And when they do, you might see something like this that I'm showing on the screen um, appear on a lot of these jobs, which is this person has this permission. And even if you are a temporary foreign worker, you can apply to this job if you fulfill like the skill needs. But if this is not written explicitly there, I would just go ahead and assume that they're not open to non-Canadians. And that's why a lot of the job application processes would clearly question you repeatedly. Are you legally authorized to work in Canada? And the answer would be no, unless you have a work permit, you are a permanent resident, you're an international student working here, or you are a Canadian citizen. So when you are applying to clinical research roles, step one would be to do the research and find out exactly which organizations in Canada that hire for clinical research roles are even legally able to look at your application and to give you a fair shot. So that really will bring down the number of organizations you can apply to very significantly. Then looking at these small number of organizations, you have to understand that you will still continuously be competing with people from across the globe who might be applying for those positions and as well as local candidates who might just keep showing up. Maybe somebody's left a job from somewhere and they've applied. And if a company can get away with hiring someone more local, they might do that, but still do go ahead and apply because a lot of the times they might be able to negotiate a better salary or you know, look at the specific skills that you have, the language skills, the life experiences, the work experiences, and still choose you. So even though the opportunities will be limited to these few organizations, and usually they wouldn't be the typical academic organizations, you might be looking more at 
large pharmaceutical companies, lar like running large scale clinical trials and such, bigger companies who have the financial capacity and who have great need that is just not being met. So those are the places that you need to start your online research with. Narrow down a list of companies who are able to sponsor foreign temporary workers and that can be your in. Now this was the most complicated one, which is now out of the way. Now I'll give you some other alternate ways that you can also come to Canada and build a career in clinical research right here. The second way is to come as an international student. So if you didn't know, Canada has a really good like reputation of being like a home for international students to come and get good quality higher education. So when you are thinking of that, what I would personally recommend is to save up for a good master's program in Canada as an international student, whether or not you get funding. That's a separate issue I will cover in a separate video. If you do come here for a master's degree and you can do something in like clinical epi, I understand if you already have a lot of experience, but getting that local degree will allow you to also get local experience. While clinical research fundamentals might be the same across the world, the actual hands-on experience, the actual ethical standards to meet, the actual provincial and federal guidelines to meet might be drastically different. So if you're looking for a program, look for a one-year or two-year program, for example, a master's in clinical epi, master's in health sciences, which will allow you to do co-op opportunities. Now, unlike many other countries, Canada does allow its international students to work quite a few hours. So even when you're doing a full course load, you can still work up to 20 hours a week. And even if it is the summer months, like for example, you don't have school, you don't have your uh, full course load for one semester, maybe after every two or three semesters, you have one semester gap, for example, in the summer, that time you can actually do a full-time paid internship or a full-time paid co-op position. And that can be in your field of work in clinical research. So that can be an excellent way to generate some extra money from that job and get local Canadian experience. Once you are done with your degree, there are lots of opportunities in Canada to actually apply for a work permit and find work in your field. If all goes well, there's also a pathway to turn that time and experience into a permanent residency. So I don't want to advise too much on immigration. You can look that up on the Government of Canada website about how as an international student who has completed their degree in good standing and there have been good citizens during that time, you can actually get a work permit following which you can actually get a permanent residency. And once you're a permanent resident, the opportunities in Canada are endless. Worst case scenario, even if you don't end up getting your work permit here or your permanent residency here, you would still be leaving with a world-class degree, which can help you get a job in many other parts of the world and make you a far more competitive candidate because of the degree you got here, as well as the work experience you got through that degree, through the co-op placements and internships and part-time assistantships that you get to do. The final way that I want to say is if you do have a clinical background, then try to use that to build a life in Canada first. Try to dedicate, for example, if you are a nurse, if you are a doctor, if you are in one of those other kind of niche fields that Canada is always looking for, you can always come and give a, a few years of your life in actually fulfilling that duty, fulfilling that demand in the Canadian marketplace, for example, in nursing where there is a huge shortage, and then later on, three years later, five years later, if you want to transition away from the bedside into clinical research, it will be a lot easier as a local. So for internationally trained people who are in like pharmacology or clinical research and all of these other fields, this would be my general and genuine advice. It's not pretty, but it's very realistic. And I wanted to lay out all the actual challenges to you right then and there. There's lots of reasons that you should rethink this, you should strategize this, you should understand exactly what is wrong where. Having said that, I don't want to hold anyone back from actually applying for these jobs in companies which do hire international foreign workers time to time. Keep your eyes open, keep searching the job boards, keep looking at websites like uh, Government of Canada Jobs and Indeed and uh, LinkedIn and all of these and keep looking out for companies where you know that sometimes now and then they might hire foreign workers, keep applying, keep updating your resume. I will be doing another video on how you can actually polish your resume for the Canadian marketplace, especially in the field of clinical research. And that should help you a lot to get the job. 
Now, once you do get the job and once you are considered a local, life will become a lot easier. There are lots of opportunities in Canada in clinical trial and even non-trial based clinical research. So I hope this has been a helpful video, even though it's not all good news, all a bed of roses, but it gives us a realistic idea of a pathway to build a career in clinical research in Canada, either coming the academic route, getting some more local training here, or applying as a foreign worker, or coming here by using the clinical degree that you have, serving in that field for several years, and then eventually in the long run, transitioning back to clinical research. So I hope this video has been helpful. If you want to know more, please do ask me your questions in the comment section below. And until next time, this is The Brown Feminist. Bye.